What is up, everybody? We are live on the Painless Wholesaling Hour. This is a weekly call I do with Batch TV and excited to have Brad Chandler on here. For those of you that don't know Brad, I'll give a little introduction to Brad. So Brad, you're the owner of Express Home Buyers. He is awesome. I met him through networking and Brad has built an amazing business and has been in, you know, fix and flip. You've wholesaled tons of properties and, you know, I've chatted with him about what's got him to that point. And, um, you know, he, he's got an awesome message. And on these weekly calls that I do on Batch TV, I like to, you know, show you guys exactly how to get into wholesaling, show you the implementation instead of just the theory. But I also like to bring in other guests on here that are awesome at what they do in the industry. And Brad is one of the guys I look up to because he's not only is he awesome in his business, but he's taking care of stuff in his personal life. And that's important, in my opinion, not just to be good at business, but to be able to, you know, have the right mindset to take action because this is an action driven business. want to give people a little bit of intro into kind of what you do and a little bit about your experience in real estate and what makes you awesome? Yeah, man. So 20 years ago, I started this business, right? I know looking back that I started it for reasons to make a lot of money myself because I didn't feel worthy at the time. I didn't know that was the case, but fast forward 20 years, we've got a, uh, last year we did 300 deals. I spent about an hour a week in the business. In the last two weeks, I've spent zero because I've been in Costa Rica and uh, Florida having a great time with my daughter, went on spring break. So that's kind of who I am. I do want to share a deal. It's about to close this week. It's a wholesale deal in California. So we operate in DC and uh, of the 4,000 deals, we've probably done 3,900 of them in DC and Maryland, but we've expanded to last year into LA and we've got a wholesale deal that if it closes this week and it's a NIF because a wholesale deals will sometimes fall out. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's going to be sure. a $200,000 uh, rip. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. You're about to do $200,000 rip on a wholesale deal. Yep. Oh so I know this is a real estate podcast and we're going to switch subjects and get into really important stuff, but I just want to let everyone know like it happens right we didn't do anything magical another competitor of ours actually had it under contract and couldn't close or actually they didn't like them or something and we came in and we presented ourselves well and they trusted us and they believed in us and here we are like you know fingers crossed that it will close but even if it doesn't close we know the numbers are so good that we'll just take it down and you know if we have to spruce it up a little bit and then resell it amazing and those spreads exist in california because of the price point of the home so for anybody that's listening to this if you're in the midwest for example when houses cost like anywhere from 60 to 200,000, it's very difficult to make like giant spreads because the home values aren't that much, right? So whenever I do deals there, obviously you can get lucky, right? Or you can find that great deal. But when you're in the West Coast, California, Oregon, Washington, Utah, AZ, like where price points can get up to the million. When you find a property that is pretty distressed and you get it, I'm assuming that's what happened to you guys, right? You got it at the right price. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a, an inherited property. Yep. So there was definitely distress. Awesome. Yeah. And that's exactly right. So if anybody's watching this, like, wow, I'd love to make $200,000 or a hundred. My biggest deal that I did was like 197,000, but I actually wholetailed it. And then, you know, you got a little expenses with that, but yeah, it's amazing when you get those. It doesn't happen all the time, right, Brad? No, like, no. unfortunately, <laughs> we wish, right? But that's that's the thing with being consistent. You do some base hits, you're doing deals, you're making money. And then as you stay consistent, that big whale comes along, right? It's not all the time, but yep. it does happen. And that's something we can kind of segue right into your message, Brad, is like a lot of what you teach, a lot of what I teach is like consistency. And it's not so much like you're getting pumped up to do take action. And that's how people succeed. Like I wouldn't say I'm pumped up every day to go to work, Brad. Like I don't know if you're like every day you're motivated, but there are certain things that you teach and that we, I talk about that like get you in the mindset set to be diligent to take action even when life isn't always perfect but you have that consistency in your life and i think a lot of your message goes into that like addressing those things that help you you know take that action right yeah so the answer to your question is yes i do wake up every day every day happy and every day like motivated to do the business but not real estate like i got into <laughs> real estate now 20 years looking back because i needed to prove my worth through making money right i thought that would prove my worth i thought that would bring me happiness and i was wrong it doesn't and look at all the millionaires who die every year through drug overdoses like money won't bring you happiness. So Nathan can teach you how to make millions for sure. But if you don't have self love and self compassion, it doesn't matter like everything else in your life will suck. So two years ago, trying to get myself my son help for anxiety, I was on the zoom call with a performance coach. And she told me that I had a tick. And I was like, What are you talking about? She said, you blink profusely when you talk about your childhood, you probably have some unresolved childhood. She used the word trauma. I don't like to use the word trauma anymore. Because as soon as people hear that, they're like, Well, I didn't have trauma. But right. trauma can be as little as your little sister coming home from the 
the hospital from being born and you felt like your parents loved her more than they loved you. And therefore your little brain told yourself that you were unlovable or not worthy of love. So she said, your unresolved childhood trauma may be contributing to his anxiety. Do you want to come out and work with my ex Navy SEAL husband? And I said, of course, I came out and then a weekend, actually a three hour session, my life completely changed. And I realized that there was nothing ever wrong with Brad. It was my parents and the way that they made me feel about myself. And from that second that I walked out of that Airbnb bedroom, I had my freedom. Literally, I was in tears like, oh my gosh, like I look back at my life and my business and the $9 million worth of mistakes and my failed marriages and my you know use of weed and alcohol and just on and on and on. It all came down to that. So now I teach people how to find that same freedom. So a question to the audience is the basis of most every problem in your life comes down to one thing and one thing possible. And you might be saying, how is that possible? Because, you know, whether you have a business, whether you're having trouble knocking on doors or or doing what Nathan says, cold calling or texting, whether you're in a bad marriage, you work too much, you don't spend enough time with the kids or your kids have behavioral issues, you're out of shape, you need to lose weight, you constantly get stressed, you get angry, you drink too much, smoke too much weed, you have chaos in your business, you procrastinate, you have health issues, literally I could go on and on and on. These are vastly different things, right? Completely different things. Do you know that every single one of those comes down to one problem and one problem only. And that is your thinking. Every single problem you have is a result of your thinking. So what happens is everything starts with a thought, a thought becomes a feeling or or an emotion. And that feeling or emotion becomes an action and action then becomes a behavior and a behavior justifies itself by looping back and strengthening that initial thought. Brad, I agree because I remember when I was a brand new wholesaler, and I went to an event like a weekend event, I paid $7,500 to go to a mastermind event, they got everyone pumped up, they said, Hey, just set big goals and do that. And they just, they got you, you know, sold on all these different services they use. And everyone was pumped. When Monday hit, I kind of forgot pretty much a lot of what they said other than looking at my notes in the motivation. And that's why I kind of said mindset in the very beginning is like, that doesn't always drive you, right? Like that can fade. You have to dive deeper. Absolutely. Absolutely. And why doesn't it work, right? Because you can change your thinking in a weekend, but what they do at these events is it's all about, let's do affirmations and let's change our behavior. Let's go make more phone calls. If you're mm-hmm. in marriage, therapy. It's just like, hey, let's call your wife more during the day, bring her home flowers, repeat back what she said, go on more date nights, right? The problem isn't the relationship. If you're in a bad marriage or a bad relationship, it has nothing to do with the actual relationship. It has to do with the relationship that you have with yourself. And why do you have a bad relationship with yourself? Because your flawed thinking from childhood programming that you received somewhere between the ages of zero and 10 years old that you don't even know is controlling your behavior because it's buried in your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind controls 95% of your behavior. So let's get back to mindset. If you really want to change something in your business, your life, your health or whatever, what do you have to do? You've got to go to the source of the pain. What caused that pain in the first place? And the way that I do it is you can do it through different ways that I think is the most effective way in the planet is through hypnosis. What's hypnosis? Hypnosis is just a deeply relaxed state that lets you clear out all the mess and the noise in your head and focus on the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind knows the source of every one of your problems and to fix pain, whether it's mental or physical, you've got to go to the source. So all of this mindset training that you get from most of the gurus out there doesn't ever go to the source of the pain. Marriage counseling doesn't go to the source of the pain. Talk therapy doesn't go to the source of the pain. It focuses on the symptoms. Oh, you're not making enough calls. Go make more calls. Well, if you're sitting there and your subconscious mind is telling yourself that you're not worthy of success, that you're not smart enough to close a deal, do you think someone telling you to make another 100 calls is going to fix anything? No, it's the same thing as like, oh, fix your marriage by going on more date nights and repeating back what you say. Well, you can go on all the date nights you want and repeat back all you said. But if your subconscious mind is telling you that you're no good, it's never going to work. You know, Brad, and that's so interesting to me is like uh, the reason why I like having you on here is because that perspective, that's different. That's different than what a lot of people teach you know for me my mentality has always been take action right like massive and perfect action like i'll figure it out right and you know some people they want the life they want to be successful as wholesalers they want to be successful real estate investors but they do have those things that get in the way right and brad this it's really interesting because you know a lot of people might be hearing what you're saying and be like i don't know and you probably had some people like as you talk but that's why i think it's important to like you know uh expose people to like hey if you're struggling to take action there's probably something deeper and i know because i talk to a lot of people that want to succeed at wholesaling or real estate. They tell me everything. I want to succeed. I want to make money. I want to have a financial freedom. You know, I want to crush it. But you know, when I bring them in, start working with them, they do have some fear, right? They're afraid they'll fail. 
right? And there's really not much I can do that can take that fear away other than show them, teach them, like practice with them. But there are sometimes things that are deeper that maybe they don't feel like self, that confidence, right? That self-love, you call it self-love. Would the same thing be like confidence in yourself, like self-confidence? Yeah, you, can't, you, you can't have confidence in yourself really if you lack self-love. And if you do, it's like narcissism, it's just false. You portray that you're confident, but deep down inside you're not because you don't feel good about yourself. So what you just said is really important, Nathan. Your subconscious mind only has one purpose in your body, and that is to keep you alive. So what it likes to do is it likes to keep you in familiar situations. Let's say that your mom was a bully and your mom caused you a lot of stress and a lot of trauma. Believe it or not, your mind is going to go and search out a bully. Not purposely, you're not gonna do it on purpose. If someone would have said to me 20 years ago when I met my first wife, I'll give you a million dollars if you can go find your father. I would have been like, I don't know what to do, but guess what, I did it, my brain went and found it. And why is that? Because it's what's familiar and your subconscious mind knows what's familiar and it kept you alive. It doesn't care if you are happy or sad. So let's take all of these people that you and I have, because I used to coach real estate back in the day too. And the right. same thing, like all these people would come to me fired up and be like, I want to be like you. So many people didn't. And here's why. And again, it's not their fault. It's not your fault. And you don't, it's like the goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. But it's the truth that really isn't your fault. Your brain wants to keep you in what's familiar. Going and making phone calls and knocking on doors and putting up bandit signs is not familiar. Sitting on the couch, yeah. possibly watching Netflix and drinking and beer, that's familiar. So your brain's gonna always wanna pull you back to what's familiar because guess what? It's safe, it's safe. So how do you change? What did I say earlier? All change begins with awareness. So if you can do this work and you can figure out, oh my gosh, I really lack self-love. Oh my gosh, I went back to the source of my pain. My dad used to hit me and make fun of me. And I said, oh my God, I must deserve it. I'm a bad kid, I'm no good. That's still controlling me. Now I can go make those calls because I know that I'm enough. And if they hang up on me and yell at me, it's not my problem. It's their problem. They're projecting on me. So few people know this. And then that loop that we talked about in the beginning. So now they don't make phone calls. Now they start judging themselves. And it goes right back to see, I'm a lazy, no good, blah, blah, whatever. And then you just relive it over and over and over again the rest of your life. You know, that's so powerful. It's so amazing because like you said, you used to coach. Like that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm showing people that, yes, if you take massive action, it does work, right? But I think what happens is take taking that massive action is what people don't feel comfortable with, right? You know, that's why I love working with Batch. That's why I love working with you is because it works, right? You just have to take the action. And if you're not able to do that, you have to look deep down inside and be like, what's stopping me? Yeah, it works. So if you're sitting here and you've been trying this for a years and nothing, and you're like, it doesn't work, it works. What doesn't work is your brain. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. What doesn't work is your thinking. Your thinking is holding you back. So when I decided to make those five business mistakes, a lot of them were around my ego. When I decided to buy a 42 foot boat and I didn't even know how to read a chart and I decided I was going to take it to the Bahamas two and a half years ago. Do you think I woke up and said, I'm going to go buy a boat. I'm going to go to the Bahamas because I'm no good. And if I get to the Bahamas, I'll be good. No, it was all in my subconscious brain. All you have to do is look at the results of your life, your relationship, your health, and they tell the story. So if you're sitting here thinking, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy, you might be saying that, but look at your results. Are you in a deeply connected, intimate relationship? Do you take things personally? Are you upset all the time? Do you drink too much? Are you on antidepressants or anti-anxieties? All of these are little clues that your thinking is flawed. And if your thinking is flawed, it's going to really mess up your real estate business. I appreciate you coming on here and talking to people because I think it's important again to, you know, address sometimes what's keeping you from, you know, going for it, right? I love the power, the energy you bring. I appreciate you coming on here. And, and everybody that's been watching this, like I said, if you're interested in chat with Brad, definitely hit him up. And the reason why I come on here and, uh, every week is my goal is to help everyone succeed. If you're not succeeding, then we got to get you successful, right? Whether that's monetarily like making money or in your life, like that's what I want for everyone here. So that's the purpose where I come on every week is not just to come on here and chat because I do like talking to you, Brad, but I come on here so we can improve people's lives. That's what we do. I'm with you, man, like impact, right? You and I want to make an impact when you're in your business or your life and you can switch from trying to prove yourself by making money to actually trying to make an impact. That's why you're successful. That's why I'm successful. That's why my real estate 
estate business is doing really, really well now is because I'm not focused on the money. I'm focused on how can I make the greatest impact? And when you do that, the money always comes. A hundred percent. And Brad, we'll leave off with that because I think that's so important for everyone here. When you are talking to that seller, when you're talking to that buyer, you are there to serve them. You're there to help them. You're not tr there to take advantage of them. You're not here to just try to make a quick buck. You're, you're there. How can I provide value? How can I leave them off in a better position than I left them with? And I know you said when your business started thriving even more when you started putting the people first, right? Absolutely. All right, Brad. Well, we love having you on here. Everybody, we're out.